Have you done as I asked? Very well. Then know this. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself, listen to the currents of the galaxy. There are others who may achieve this in occupying the mind, in achieving a moving meditation where operating on machinery achieves a similar effect. Very well. Then know this. All situations contain within them the potential for violence. To know how to hold that violence in check, to restrain it, and use it to hold the situation to your advantage is the way of any wielder of the Force. Skill does not always draw from the Force. Very well. Then know this. How some situations play out depend on who is perceiving them and whether they are being perceived. Your ability to control the perception of others in such situations will allow you to manipulate events to resolve them peacefully or violently. Skill does not always draw from the Force. Very well. Then know this. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself, listen to the currents of the galaxy. There are others who center themselves by achieving a moving meditation, where operating on the minds of machines achieves a similar calm in one's own mind. The ability to persuade others is a powerful weapon, perhaps more so than any lightsaber. It is a strength to defeat an opponent without combat, to convince them that your will is right or just, or will simply benefit them in a way that they had not perceived. Examine their actions and the why of how they do them. And when you achieve such understanding, more truths may be revealed. There are many secrets that the Force may not unlock, for they are not things of life. To uncover such secrets can allow you to see events more clearly. It can grant you more weapons, more wealth, and allow you access to places and their secrets that can often turn the tide of a battle or change events. Skill does not always draw from the Force. A moment. That beast there. Do you see it? The Force flows even through these simple creatures. If you empty your mind, you may be able to feel its thoughts. They aren't fully formed. Basic instincts, primal urges, every breath dominated by the needs of the moment. Good. Beasts can be easier to affect than other sentients, but you must bridge the gap between what distinguishes us and them. You feel its thoughts, yes? Like a low rumble before the storm. Use the Force to create a barrier around it, carefully and slowly. close and you have the potential with practice you can make any animal passive and pliable but the cage around their perceptions is a fragile thing many things can break its hold violence especially with the force anything is possible but that is the end of the lesson for now how are the port stabilizers they check out Mandalore all systems are green Good. I want the shuttle bound for Onderon within the hour. What do you want? Is all in readiness? <laughs> it is. Like I promised. Why? You want to back out now? My only concerns are for the one you escort to Onderon, Mandalorian. Would you do any less for one of your clan? Don't pretend to understand us. We Mandalorians are a breed apart. If by apart you mean scattered, broken, and lost, then yes, you are correct. Not for long. Soon the Mandalorians will be strong again, united as one clan under one banner. Mine. Ah, yes. The Great Crusade, after the first one was ended by Revan and the Jedi. Such a defeat was merciful, an echo of the end, when your ships were in flames, crushed in the grip of Malachor V. But I do not need to remind you of such things. I was at Malachor V, and I remember how many Jedi died to stop us there. And no matter how many dead orbit that planet, the Mandalorians still live. 
Clan Ordo still lives. See Kex there? He was serving on Nar Shaddai's muscle for the huts. Kelborn was a scout for the Duros on Frontier Worlds. I brought them here, gave them a purpose. This galaxy will be ours again, I promise you. That is the future. Indeed, the future is always in motion. It is a difficult thing to see. Perhaps there will be no New Age Mandalore, no great Mandalorian crusade. Perhaps your people fought their last battle at Malachor V, and you have been dying ever since, a quiet death that will last centuries. And perhaps all that remains will be what I see before me. A man wounded by a Jedi, encased in a Mandalorian shell, hunted by the thought of being the last of the Mandalorians. You've got some guts talking to me like that. You think your age or your Jedi whelp are going to keep you safe from me? No, Mandalore. You are wrong. I hope that it is you who will keep the one I travel with safe. You are loyal, and you have served many masters, even when they abandoned you. Do you wonder where he wanders now, Mandalore? Why he gave you your orders, then abandoned you at the edge of the galaxy? How do you know that? I know many things, and I can answer the question that burns within your shell, Mandalore. But there is a price. You must keep the one I travel with safe. She is important to me, more important than anything. Show the same loyalty you have shown in the past, Mandalore. If there is a Mandalorian crusade, let it be for something that will carry your people's memory into the future. So when the time comes when there are no more Mandalorians, then at least their honor will remain. The one I travel with has walked your same path. And I ask that when the end comes, that you remember that kinship, even if it seems there is nothing else left. Forget the Jedi. Keep your eyes on her. Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the Room of a Thousand Fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and if I up the Dubana gas levels in the carbine, that would be enough to punch a hole even in triple Durasteel. And we'll need weapons like that if the Republic discovers the camp on Duxon. Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General. And I obey, as I did at Malachor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, switch the face of the plus one I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine ten. Fear. Switch the face of the plus two. The command is still general. The total is eight and eight eight I obey. Switch as I did at Malakor. Not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droids cannot be read in such a way, nor the beast. He has little thoughts to speak of. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. Such is the case with primitive minds. It is of no matter. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. 
at other times. He will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Yes, have you come with questions? Ask, and I will answer. Perhaps I think it is fair to say that few did. Revan had a mother and father, parents, ancestors, like all Jedi do, and when he awakened to his potential, I was there to see it. But where he was born, where he came from, I do not know, any more than I know where he walks now. Some said that Revan was born in the outer regions, beyond the Rim, and that's what called to him during the Mandalorian Wars, and after, it was the call of home. I know more, but it may not be enough for the answers you seek. Fall. Ah, already you presume much. You were there at Malachor. Revan's choices were always his own. It was not teaching or circumstance or example. It was him. Is that what he was? Or was he always true to himself, no matter what personality he wore? And there is something that the Council may never understand, that perhaps Revan never felt. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. I do not believe the Jedi Council changed Revan as they claimed. They merely stripped away the surface and allowed the true self to emerge again, someone who was willing to wage war to save others. But that is my belief since I knew Revan from long ago, as a master knows their apprentice. He came to me, yes, both before and after, before Revan knew himself. And after, in the times when Revan was coming to his own and learning he was more than he had been told. At one time, Revan was my Padawan in times past, long ago. But Revan, when he had learned all he could, had other masters, that fool Ja and other Jedi on other planets. He learned from each, but in the end, he turned back to me. When he realized there was nothing more to be learned from the Jedi, except how one could leave them forever. Revan was power. It was like staring into the heart of the Force. Even then, you could see the Jedi he would slay etched on his soul. You are different. When I look at you, it is like staring at the death of the Force. Why are you here? Because I told her. Told her everything. Ah, and now you are free. Yeah, so no more threats, no more of your requests. You and me, we're done. Did you ever think I truly held you? You're more of a fool than I thought. What truly held you was you, and let me show you why. I once held the galaxy by the throat, as you once held her by the throat and let her die slowly. And your emotion at that point is what you fear. I wielded power like you cannot imagine. Everything I saw was awash with possibilities, spreading outwards, touching everything else. I saw all of that, all that the Force is. And only when it was ripped from me did I truly see it. And I know what lies buried within you, that you hide with your desperate thoughts, your guilt, your lusts. I can unlock that part of you any time I wish. It is a simple thing, the human mind. Once it feels something strongly, it becomes etched in the memory, the subconscious. Shall I show you? That part of you that hungered to kill Jedi, that took pleasure from it? Or perhaps you will continue to listen to my counsel, and I shall ignore your pathetic attempts at freedom. Now leave me, murderer. I have nothing further to say to one such as you. Your thoughts are disturbed. 
I can feel them like a shiver running through you. This cave is Force-sensitive. I've read of places such as this. Force-sensitive locations such as this absorb and reflect Force energy. The crystals are the catalyst here. I sense that Revan once passed through here, leaving a strong impression behind in the crystals. Perhaps future Jedi who visit this cave will feel our presence, as if seeing our footprints preserved in the soil. The crystals here are infused with the Force. Some could be harvested and used for lightsabers. The crystals here do not drain Force energy from Jedi. They collect the excess energy that radiates from those attuned to the Force. That can hardly be avoided. Even mundane actions of the basest creatures can create detectable ripples in the Force. A Minoc beating its wings on the plains could cause a sandstorm in the desert. And, figuratively speaking, Jedi have much bigger wings. That would create quite a large impression of yourself, and the crystals would eventually grow back. Crystal responds to you. This is very rare indeed. You scoff at this gift, but many Jedi would greatly covet such a treasure. No, the crystal has bonded to you. Another Jedi would have little use for it. The crystal's bond with you is such that the stronger you become in the Force, the more powerful your crystal will grow. This crystal will make an excellent focus for a lightsaber. Quite the contrary. Picture yourself as a sieve, and the Force as water pouring into you. This crystal draws from the excess water that escapes the sieve. The crystal is in tune with you. It will use whatever water that pours through you, be it dark or light. Return to me when you are ready for us to begin our assault. I warn you not to keep me waiting. Well maneuvered. With both the mercenaries and the militia counting on your aid, you can influence the outcome of the situation as you see fit. How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. You deserve nothing. But you have earned such obedience, yes. They are tools, you are right. More than you know. I am not blind. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The disciple, he worships you quietly. The alien obeys you, even within the machines there are echoes. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. I, I am but a mirror whose only purpose is to show you what your own eyes cannot yet see. Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. 
Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts, strong influence indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Oh, did they? No, Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Not a one, but we shall see where our journey takes us, I think, and see how many answers we come across, yes. slide from your vision, from your mind, like water. You know who I am, but you will be unable to voice it, to remember it. What does a Jedi see? Only what I allow them to see. What are you doing on this sh- Enough. What did you see in the web of worlds that have died? What did you see when you saw it through the Force? I see the death of the galaxy. Of life. At first, I thought it was just conquest. But it's more terrible than that. It's an echo, spreading outwards, killing everything. It's not possible. You are a wasted pawn of the Republic, young one. You could have been so much more, even with your wide-eyed innocence, your naive love for others. Now you understand the magnitude of what is being done. I know you. Not even the markings of the dark side can hide it. Why have you done this? I? Do you think I seek the death of all living things? There is no victory in such things. I do not want to win our war like this, little Jedi. When I win, I wish it to be because I was right, my teachings true. How long have you been here, among us? You know the truth. I have always been here, watching and listening to the echo you have found. You know its source and what must be done. I will not let you hurt her. Little Jedi, you cannot stop me. But you will forget this. Your mind is worse than the others, so open, so trusting. Your feelings for her are your weakness. Yet I will gift you with this. You will remember what you have discovered when the time is correct. Know that you have seen what formerly only I knew. Now we shall see if you have the strength to stop what comes. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened, the death of Master Kavar. No, what is left of the Jedi you will find what remains in the ruins of the Enclave on Dantooine. This matter has come full circle, and there is something there that you must hear if you are to understand. It... it is different. It has been some time.
Is it as you expected? Yes, and that is why this place is empty. Your actions have crippled the Order, perhaps destroyed them. No, perhaps it is difficult to say. For every Jedi slain, for every Sith slain, another rises. But the Order is wounded, yes. Because there is something we must discuss. I have done what I can to keep you from the Jedi and the Sith, but a critical moment approaches, and what you have done is not enough. Master Vrook, despite his faults, was right to come here. I had thought he might have recognized Dantooine for what it was, what had been done there. You are tied to places such as these, you know. Yes, but Master Vrook was unwilling to see what other masters may have seen that the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. They admitted it as much in the council chamber after your trial, though they did not understand what it meant at first. They assumed it was a threat that they felt. From one perspective, they were correct. As much as you can form connections to others, such connections exist on a galactic scale as well. It is possible to hurt or sever those connections, to create places in the Force where it is difficult to center oneself, but that is the crudest form of manipulation. It is possible to affect those connections in other ways, by the slightest action. A seemingly minor choice, a small cruelty. The stronger your connection to life, to the Force, the stronger these echoes can be made, and the stronger they are felt. When heard, Force sensitives instinctively seek out the Source, are drawn to it to try and form a connection. And when the connection is formed, both become stronger, and the influence between them grows. Your companions, many are touched by the Force on some level, and in many ways they serve out of compulsion and because your connection influences them strongly. It was much like it was for you in the Mandalorian Wars, with many Jedi under your command. But this connection has other consequences. When the Source is wounded, the one on which others draw strength, then they are wounded as well. What one feels, the other feels. And when others die, the scream travels back to the Source. If they occur at the same time, or at the right time, these screams will build upon each other until it is the only sound you can hear and the deaths of many will cause the screams to build until their pain becomes yours and you die as well. And that is why during the Mandalorian Wars, you lost your connection to the Force. It was that final battle, the deaths of so many Jedi, that caused you to lose your connection. It caused the wound that you feel now. It caused pain in the Force, an emptiness, a wound that has yet to heal. But it does not end there. If it did, then perhaps the threat that we face would be more manageable. This pain I describe, the echo of these acts, is true of planets as well. Tremendous loss of life on a planetary scale can also cast echoes, create a scream, a wound in the Force that can travel across the galaxy. It can be felt by Force sensitives, and it can influence them whether they realize it or not. If enough of these echoes are allowed to build in the Force uncontrolled, the consequences could be disastrous. The connections of all life would be affected. Yes, in that he was correct. But like Vruk himself, that is incomplete in itself, and it only achieves meaning when part of a larger whole, as I have said, screams, and their echoes can overlap, build in strength. And if timed correctly, they will build on each other. The scream will grow. And anything that can hear this scream shall be deafened or killed. With difficulty and controlling it, well, I do not believe such a thing is possible once it has begun. But in order for this to work, all of them must be timed correctly, must be carefully orchestrated and controlled from the greatest to the smallest of echoes. 
even the ones that come from a lone exile echoing across the galaxy. And when that exile forms connections to others as you do, the danger becomes apparent. The echo continues to grow, to travel. If you see only blame in my words, then you have misunderstood me. Anyone can do such things, since life is connected by the Force. Sometimes the connections are faint, but in your case, they are very strong. You instinctively know how to manipulate such connections, to influence others. You have seen it mirrored in those who travel with you. You give others strength to act, but it is also possible to draw upon the strength of others to increase your own. It is similar to drawing upon the Force, as Jedi do. But when it is touched by the power of the dark side, it is something else, something deadly. These Sith we face, they have learned how to do this. It is a technique that has been lost for some time, not seen in the day since the ancient Sith. They can use it to consume other Force sensitives, and at the highest pinnacle of power, use it to consume anything that lives. The blind seer. Her master has harnessed this technique, and he is rapidly approaching the height of its power. I fear he may even rival some of the ancient Sith. He is already more of a force than a living thing, a hole in the force that threatens to draw everything into it. And the teaching must die with him, or else all life will be placed in jeopardy. The destruction of the Order, the Masters, it was not an end in itself. I did not expect them to still live. Their presence was knowledge I did not possess. But now this has been corrected, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns. But this moment is all that really matters. It was never my wish that you find the Masters, only find yourself, although I did not expect them to still live. I had hoped you would learn something from the Jedi Masters as they fell before you, not just of battle, but of yourself and the Force. I must know if killing them, if revenge brought you any measure of satisfaction, if seeing them dead has settled the disquiet within you. Did I wish to see them dead? No. Defeated, perhaps. I merely wished them to see that they and their teachings were wrong, that one could not truly understand the Force simply by adhering to the Jedi Code. All I have ever trained have been failures to them. Students who went to fight the Mandalorians, who fell to the dark side, who abandoned their training. To see one that had the strength to best them, that is a moment I will not forget. Yet, it has not been as satisfying as I had hoped. To best one in battle is one thing. To defeat them without striking a blow, that was my hope. Regardless, it had to be done. To have such powerful Jedi still live, still be felt in the Force, even on such worlds as they had chosen, was a threat that had to be ended. To the Sith? No, not to the Sith. Perhaps not in the way you would think. Let us return to my question. If by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace... It was as I thought. You have failed me, completely and utterly. I have taught you to hear the Force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. This is what you have wrought. Countless murderers, slayers, assassins, born of war that has, as always, taught the wrong lesson. You showed them life without the Force, and instead of showing them truth, power, all you showed them was how the galaxy may die. You are responsible for all of this. Even now, events spiral towards destruction, and there is nothing that can be done because you refuse to listen, to understand. You have seen the effects you have on those close to you, heard the echoes scream across dead planets, and watched as your strength has grown. Yet it is for nothing. To have the Jedi Masters brought low by such a failure, there is no victory in that. You have not heard a thing I have taught. 
and for all I have said, you have never learned to listen. <gasps> there. Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses, as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson and a reminder of what you have forgotten. You were my last hope. The only one who could change what is to come. And now you have left me nothing. I shall teach you no longer. Our bond remains, but that is all. This place will hide you from the Sith for a time. Enough to do what must be done. Stay here and die, apprentice, among the wreckage of all that remains of the Jedi. It is a fitting grave until the Sith come to end you. To end everything. It is done. She is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. You have taught them to bond with others, and then feed on others through that bond. What you have brought is the death of all who can feel the Force. It is your gift to the galaxy, Exile. And unless you hear it, and silence the echo you have caused, then every living thing everywhere that is touched by the Force will die. If I lose her, it will be my failing. It is the failing of the Jedi who followed Revan. It is a failing of their teaching. Soon your ship will come, my master. I will bring her before you, but I will not let you have her. Soon your ship shall come from that which made you. I know you can hear me. I have always known. It is why I followed you. I have destroyed planets for you, General. But now, this once, if we could save something in this galaxy, I need to do this, or I will die inside, like I died at Malachor V. It... it is different. It has been some time. Is it as you expected? Yes, and that is I, though I am not of them any longer. You are correct. Time is something that neither of us has. But for now, we must speak. Your actions have crippled the Order, perhaps destroyed them. No. Perhaps it is difficult to say. For every Jedi slain, for every Sith slain, another rises. But the Order is wounded, yes. Oh yes, your hate has destroyed them. You should be proud of the blood you have spilled, the lives you have ended. But before enjoying this victory, there is something we must discuss first. I have done what I can to keep you from the Jedi and the Sith, but a critical moment approaches, and what you have done is not enough. Master Vrook, despite his faults, was right to come here. I had thought he might have recognized Dantooine for what it was, what had been done there. You are tied to places such as these, you know.
Yes, but Master Vrook was unwilling to see what other masters may have seen. That the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. They admitted it as much in the council chamber after your trial, though they did not understand what it meant at first. They assumed it was a threat that they felt. From one perspective, they were correct. As much as you can form connections to others, such connections exist on a galactic scale as well. It is possible to hurt or sever those connections, to create places in the Force where it is difficult to center oneself, but that is the crudest form of manipulation. It is possible to affect those connections in other ways, by the slightest action. A seemingly minor choice, a small cruelty. The stronger your connection to life, to the Force, the stronger these echoes can be made, and the stronger they are felt. When heard, Force sensitives instinctively seek out the Source, are drawn to it to try and form a connection. And when the connection is formed, both become stronger, and the influence between them grows. Your companions, many are touched by the Force on some level, and in many ways they serve out of compulsion and because your connection influences them strongly. It was much like it was for you in the Mandalorian Wars, with many Jedi under your command. But this connection has other consequences. When the Source is wounded, the one on which others draw strength, then they are wounded as well. What one feels, the other feels. And when others die, the scream travels back to the Source. If they occur at the same time, or at the right time, these screams will build upon each other until it is the only sound you can hear. And the deaths of many will cause the screams to build until their pain becomes yours, and you die as well. And that is why, during the Mandalorian Wars, you lost your connection to the Force. It was that final battle, the deaths of so many Jedi, that caused you to lose your connection. It caused the wound that you feel now. It caused pain in the Force, an emptiness, a wound that has yet to heal. But it does not end there. If it did, then perhaps the threat that we face would be more manageable. This pain I describe, the echo of these acts, is true of planets as well. Tremendous loss of life on a planetary scale can also cast echoes, create a scream, a wound in the Force that can travel across the galaxy. It can be felt by Force sensitives, and it can influence them whether they realize it or not. If enough of these echoes are allowed to build in the Force uncontrolled, the consequences could be disastrous. The connections of all life would be affected. Yes, in that he was correct. But like Vruk himself, that is incomplete in itself, and it only achieves meaning when part of a larger whole. As I have said, screams and their echoes can overlap, build in strength. And if timed correctly, they will build on each other. The scream will grow. And anything that can hear this scream shall be deafened or killed. Now you sound like a Jedi, disbelieving, scoffing. Yet you have seen the evidence of this all around you. But in order for this to work, all of them must be timed correctly, must be carefully orchestrated and controlled, from the greatest to the smallest of echoes, even the ones that come from a lone exile echoing across the galaxy. And when that exile forms connections to others as you do, the danger becomes apparent, the echo continues to grow, to travel. Yes, he is correct. You form such bonds easily. The why of it is not important now. All that is important is that you understand that your actions affect others strongly. Anyone can do such things, since life is connected by the Force. Sometimes the connections are faint, but in your case, they are very strong. You instinctively know how to manipulate such connections, to influence others. You have seen it mirrored in those who travel with you. You give others strength to act, but it is also possible to draw upon the strength of others to increase your own. It is similar to drawing upon the Force, as Jedi do. But when it is touched by the power of the dark side, it is something else, something deadly. These Sith we face, they have learned how to do this. It is a technique that has been lost for some time, not seen in the day since the ancient Sith. 
they can use it to consume other force sensitives, and at the highest pinnacle of power, use it to consume anything that lives. The blind seer. Her master has harnessed this technique, and he is rapidly approaching the height of its power. I fear he may even rival some of the ancient Sith. He is already more of a force than a living thing, a hole in the force that threatens to draw everything into it. And the teaching must die with him, or else all life will be placed in jeopardy. The destruction of the Order, the Masters, it was not an end in itself. I did not expect them to still live. Their presence was knowledge I did not possess. But now this has been corrected, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns. But this moment is all that really matters. It was never my wish that you find the Masters, only find yourself, although I did not expect them to still live. I had hoped you would learn something from the Jedi Masters as they fell before you. Not just of battle, but of yourself and the Force. I must know if killing them, if revenge brought you any measure of satisfaction, if seeing them dead has settled the disquiet within you. Because it matters to me in a way that never mattered to the Jedi, to the Council when they cast you out. You must understand, I did not wish the Jedi dead. Defeated, perhaps. I merely wished them to see that they and their teachings were wrong, that one could not truly understand the Force simply by adhering to the Jedi Code. All I have ever trained have been failures to them. Students who went to fight the Mandalorians, who fell to the dark side, who abandoned their training. To see one that had the strength to best them, that is a moment I will not forget. Yet, it has not been as satisfying as I had hoped. To best one in battle is one thing. To defeat them without striking a blow, that was my hope. Regardless, it had to be done. To have such powerful Jedi still live still be felt in the Force, even on such worlds as they had chosen, was a threat that had to be ended. That is not important. First, let us return to my question. If, by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace... It was as I thought. You have failed me, completely and utterly. I have taught you to hear the Force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. This is what you have wrought. Countless murderers, slayers, assassins, born of war that has, as always, taught the wrong lesson. You showed them life without the Force, and instead of showing them truth, power, all you showed them was how the galaxy may die. You are responsible for all of this. Even now, events spiral towards destruction, and there is nothing that can be done because you refuse to listen, to understand. You have seen the effects you have on those close to you, heard the echoes scream across dead planets, and watched as your strength has grown. Yet it is for nothing to have the Jedi Masters brought low by such a failure. There is no victory in that. You have not heard a thing I have taught, and for all I have said, you have never learned to listen. There. Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses, as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson and a reminder of what you have forgotten. You were my last hope, the only one who could change what is to come. And now you have left me nothing. I shall teach you no longer. Our bond remains, but that is all. This place will hide you from the Sith for a time, enough to do what must be done. Stay here and die, apprentice, among the wreckage of all that remains of the Jedi. It is a fitting grave until the Sith 
come to end you, to end everything. It is done. She is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. It is not the first time we have met, Atris. I was here before. With the Exile? Yes, I was here both times when the Exile was brought before you. Who are you? I was the one who asked... You? You seem familiar to me. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Treya, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Treya, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. You have gathered Sith holocrons, Sith teachings from across the galaxy. It is why you have chosen servants who cannot feel the Force. And most importantly, they cannot feel what you have become. I have sought to preserve the Jedi Order, and I have gathered all that I know of the Sith to this place, so I might find them and stop them. I had wondered if any of these holocrons had survived Dantooine. You have taken relics from one destroyed planet to the devastation of another. It was always intended for the Jedi to retreat to Telos should Dantooine be attacked, taking all their lore with them. We could not allow the tragedy at Osis to happen again. Such an act marked Telos for destruction. It is why the Sith came here, though the fleet commanders did not know why. It is why Revan ordered its destruction to mark the beginning of the Jedi's civil war. It was a message that there would be no place for the Jedi to retreat, to hide. I would not be surprised if Revan left other gifts beneath the surface of the planet. Much can be buried beneath graveyards that will never be found. When the Sith attacked, I felt Telos die. Turbo lasers fell like lightning upon the landscape, as they did on Dantooine. And so many died. So many voices screaming in pain. Yes, such acts leave their mark on the galaxy. Their cries travel far, though few can hear them. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did she betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, she will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. You have done well. All is as I have foreseen. There must always be a Darth Treya, and if it will not be her, then I must assume that role, and as always, bring about the betrayal of the Jedi and the Sith. I am not here, not in the flesh, not in your mind. These holocrons hold much of the Sith, and they hold much of my teachings from long ago. But you have much yet to learn. And great tests await you. The death of the past, the death of this false Jedi, was only part of it. One of the Sith Lords has come to Telos. You know why he has come here. And if he is not stopped here now, then he shall lay waste to this planet. You must confront him. He is part of the past, and like this false Jedi, must be laid to rest. Only then shall you be ready for your final test. If not, then you shall die. Indeed. 
Did you think I failed to recognize such? Save your threats for someone not willing to die. You know where the final test lies. It is not here, not in the battle that will wage across the surface and skies of this dead planet. And know that if you do not come to me, if you run from this, then I shall sacrifice myself and end both our lives through the bond we share. You know where you must travel, and there I shall be waiting for you. It has been some time. You were a fool to return. I spared you once. I will not do so again. Spare me? Ah, yes. No, you simply did not learn the lesson I sought to teach. That your strength is as meaningless as the strength of my hand. Why have you returned? Because now I understand why the Exile did what she did. There is much to be done. Master, she is here. I know. What is thy bidding, my master? You are to do nothing. When she arrives, bring her before me. She may not survive Malachor. So touching. Can it be you still have feelings within that shell? Master, what will you do to her? You know what I shall do. You, who wear my teachings so well. I will break her. She is a blank slate upon which my teachings may be written, as you well know. Leave me. Await the arrival of the Exile. When she comes, bring her before me. Children with lightsabers, but not Jedi, I think. Come close. Let me look upon you and see what the Exile's teaching has forged. Wasted pawn of the Republic. A blinded slave and a fool. Which of you wishes to try yourselves against me? As you can see, I am unarmed. You, perhaps. You are a wasted pawn of the Republic, young one. You could have been so much more, even with your wide-eyed innocence, your naive love for others. Think. Think before you throw away your life for her. Think of everything you will lose by dying. Your lusts unfulfilled. A dance unfinished. A love requited. Think before you give it up so quickly. 
And you, blind one, you have hungered to strike me down ever since you saw the bond the exile and I share. Can you feel the force running through me, even past the veil, past your blooded eyes? You know you cannot win. The force runs strong within you, Treya. But in the howling of a storm, it is difficult to hear the whisper of the blade. You have forever been the blind one. You were given a gift few are ever given. And yet you let your gift of sight warp you, twist... You think your existence under your lord was torture, Miraluka? I will make you see. she will be faced with a choice. One path, assuming she survives, will allow her to save her friends, but she shall be the weaker for it. The other route will lead her directly to this place, through the ones that have hounded her steps from the beginning, and she shall have her vengeance. Show her every respect when she arrives in these halls, Lord Sion. This I command you. Last you have arrived is Malakor as you remember. I know, but there is more than death in this galaxy, and you shall not find it easy. It was difficult to draw you here, but it had to be done. This place is your last test. It is the graveyard of the past, where you lost everything. It is the dark place in your mind that still echoes of failure. Now we shall see if you can overcome the weight of Malachor and silence the echoes that beat from its heart. <gasps> then finish this. Kill me. Strike me down. And at last... End this. Good, you have strength, but you have yet to learn the full extent of power. It is done. At last, it is done. You are greater than any I have ever trained. By killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. It is your choice. I had hoped you would follow Revan's path, but you and Revan are different and your path is your own. You may take one of the ships that orbit Malachor and depart this place, or you may remain here on Malachor and wait for the others, those touched by the Force, who will come in time. Or you may return to your exile, where your presence will no longer affect the actions of others. There is no dishonor in any of these choices. I only ask that you make the choice without regret. Very well. There is nothing holding you here. Not any longer. Many things do I see as I gaze here from the heart of Malachor. This place channels such energies. If it matters to you at this last moment, I shall look into the future and tell you of what I see. It is my last gift to you, from one exile to another. You travel with them for so long, yet you do not know them still. Feel them through the Force, feel what they feel, hear their thoughts and know them as I fought to know you. They were the lost Jedi, you know. The true Jedi, upon which the future will be built. They simply needed a leader and a teacher. Many battles does that one have left in him, as Revan intended. A general needs an army as he needs those he trusts. 
and Candorus is a loyal beast, no matter how much he is broken upon Revan's will. But you know this. They will die a death that will last millennia, until all that remains is their code, their history, and in the end, the shell of their armor upon the shell of a man too easily slain by Jedi. The blinded one's heart has now been put to rest. Now that vengeance no longer clouds her sight, she shall be stronger for it. She will leave her memories of Qatar in the wreckage of the past and instead turn her eyes to the future that you have put before her. He cannot help but love you in his way. It is a pure, ideal love he holds, yet somehow it never dulls in your presence or through your actions. If he leaves this place, he will leave the galaxy behind him. He will sit upon the new council, reluctantly as all good men do, and he will not forget the Jedi who had lost the Force, yet showed him the way to reclaim it. After that I do not know. I do know that you must leave him behind, the same choice that Revan made. Where you are destined, you must not take anyone you love. And of the ones who traveled with you, that is all I see. I would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know, and what you have taught yourself must not be allowed to die. You are not Sith, not truly, and it is for that that I love you. Their paths are unknown to me, even the small one who waits for you outside this place. I sense it has one last journey for you. You must go where Revan did, into the unknown regions, where the Sith, the true Sith, wait in the dark for the great war that comes. It is because he remembered what lay buried here, this place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. And because Malachor, like Korriban, is on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where the Sith wait for us in the dark. Have we? You thought that the corrupted remnants of the Republic, the machines spawned by technology that Revan led into battle, were the Sith? You are wrong. The Sith is a belief. And its empire, the true Sith Empire, rules elsewhere. And Revan knew that the true war is not against the Republic. It waits for us beyond the Outer Rim, and he has gone to fight it in his own way. And he left the Ebon Hawk and all its machines behind, for he knew he would not need them. And like you, he knew he must leave all loves behind as well, no matter how deeply one cares for them. Because such attachments are not the way of the Jedi, and they would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where he now walks. It would have helped had he made her understand, but she was always strong-willed, that one, and did not understand war as Revan did. Because I did not know where he had gone, if he had asked, would I have gone? I do not know. But he will need warriors, Sith and Jedi, any who can be sent after him into the depths of space, for any who know the way. Perhaps you shall go there with him and do battle at the end of all things. Instead, I remained here, and now show others the way. The Republic will fall, as it always has. A fall that will take millennia. Telos shall recover, and Zerka shall make it a place for machines and sciences. It will run smooth and cold, like a machine. But it shall not forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to it. It shall learn to defend itself against war, and it shall never again be caught defenseless. Dantooine shall lie in ruins as was intended when Malak's fleet brought death to the planet. Its surface will become home to nomads and primitives, who will walk upon the ruins of the Jedi Enclave and not know upon the histories they tread. Nar Shaddaa shall persist as it always has, but there will be a heart to the world where there was nothing before, where once the lost and disposed were trapped there. 
now they will struggle and grow. From despair shall come hope. Vaklu shall have a short reign, but Onderon's independence shall persist. As he fought the Mandalorians, his triumph over the Republic shall serve to preserve Onderon against the rest of the galaxy, and Onderon shall maintain its customs, its law, its history, its identity. And most of all, its victory shall give Onderon strength, so that the horrors of the Sith War and the Mandalorian Wars will not soon come to its surface again. Korriban shall be as it always was, a graveyard for the darkest of the Sith Lords still whispering within their tombs. It shall always be a source of evil, spawning threats throughout the millennia. It, like Malachor, brushes the edges of the Empire that waits in the dark, and like Malachor, the Sith have forgotten it. For a time, they will remember. Revan knew this. Ah! <gasps> <sighs>